Hi everybody, welcome back to our kitchen here at Little Spoon Farm. In today's video, we are going to show you another one of our sourdough summer series recipes, and that is for sourdough naan. And this is the easiest recipe you are ever gonna find to make sourdough naan with. This is perfect for summertime because it's made right on your stove top in a cast iron skillet. And you can use this as like a pita bread. You can use these for little um, pizza flatbreads. I mean, we enjoy these with soups and just on their own really, but they are super, super easy to make. So if you wanna learn how to make them, stay tuned and let's get started. All right. The first thing that you want to do is mix your wet ingredients together. So that's your milk, your yogurt, your sourdough starter discard, your olive oil, and I go ahead and put the salt in there. Just give that a good stir to where they're all nice and that mixture is nice and smooth. And then you're going to add the flour. Use the spatula to kind of get the mixture started. And then when you can't incorporate the ingredients anymore, use your hands and kind of, you're not kneading the dough, but you're just kind of working that dough until there's no dry bits left in the bowl. And the dough is gonna be very stiff. So don't be alarmed. It will continue to absorb water as it rests and it will get a little tacky, but not too much. So just know that as you're working that dough, you just wanna keep working it and keep working it with your hand for about a minute until it all comes together. And then you're going to cover the bowl with a piece of plastic and let that rest at room temperature until it doubles in size. Now this could take anywhere, depending on the temperature of your kitchen. You know, if it's really hot, it could take three or four hours. If it's cooler, it could take eight to 12 hours. So in a 68 degree kitchen, mine will take about, about eight hours, but you don't necessarily have to let it double all the way because these are not going to rise in an oven. So we're not looking for that sourdough to actually leaven this bread. We want it to ferment and we want to break down so that the flour is much more easily digested. So that's kind of the reason for using your sourdough starter with this recipe. So once that dough has risen, you can go ahead and divide and shape the dough. So just turn it out onto a, um, your counter and then you can either weigh the pieces. They're about 77 to 78 grams a piece. And all I do is just take my bench cutter and I, I cut it. You can eyeball this if you don't have a scale, but just divide it into eight equal pieces. Once you have those divided up, you want to shape each one of those into a ball. And I just take the piece and I kind of flatten it out a little bit on the surface with my hand. And then I pull the sides up, turn it over, and kind of gently rotate it on the surface to kind of create a taut little ball. You want to let these rest. I put a, a tea towel over them and let them rest at room temperature for about 30 minutes. You want that gluten to relax. And at this time you can start heating up your skillet. Now, I just wanna note that if you want to make this dough and let it ferment on your counter until it's ready to shape, at this point, if you don't want to cook all of them, whatever portion that you wanna maybe cook later, just put it in your fridge. Let it sit in your fridge covered until you're ready to bake it. It should stay good in there for a couple of days. And that way you can make them fresh every night if you're wanting to eat them day after day, or you can cook these up and they freeze really, really well. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. All right, you want to heat your skillet over a medium high heat. I love using my cast iron skillet. It's wonderful. If you don't have a cast iron skillet, you can use any nonstick skillet that you have. Now in my cast iron skillet, you know, I put just a little bit of oil down, not much. It doesn't need much because it doesn't really stick, but it's just kind of a habit. And so you want to take each one of your uh, dough balls and you're going to use a rolling pin to roll it out into a flat disc. 
Now, you may or may not have to use a little bit of flour to prevent it, the dough from sticking to the counter or your rolling pin. You know, just a little bit. You don't have to put a lot down um, if, if necessary. So go ahead and once that skillet is heated up and it's nice and hot, you're going to take the disc that you just rolled out and gently lay it on top of the skillet. Now, each side is gonna cook for a couple of minutes. And this first side, you'll start to see some bubbling form at the top of the dough, on the top of the surface of the dough. And at about that two minute mark, you're gonna to wanna to flip it over. And you can see that first side is kind of browned evenly all over. But the second side, as it starts to cook, the little bubbles push it up and just give it another minute, minute and a half or so. And you should see that dough starting to rise in the pan, kind of like a, a big bubble. Go ahead and flip it back over to that first side and just let it sit there. And it should start to fill with air and kind of puff up. And that's when you know it's done. So after it gets fully inflated, you can just, you know, use your spatula, take it out, and then put your next disc of dough in the skillet. Now, if your non doesn't inflate like this, sometimes I found that if I rolled the dough out too thin and there might've been like a, a hole in the dough or something, it's that air is not gonna be able to get caught up in there and it won't expand. But don't worry about it. That doesn't mean that it's not good. If it, some, some of the ones that I cook, they don't puff up like that. I just cook them and I make sure that I cook them long enough to where they're done all the way through. They're still good, I promise. So if it doesn't puff up, don't worry about it. Okay, so just repeat that with the rest of your dough balls. And I like to put mine on a, a cooling rack like this between so that they can just kind of cool off. And if we don't eat all of these, then I love to have extra in the freezer because they freeze so well. And what I do is I just stick them into a freezer safe container. I just stack them right on top of each other. I don't have to put any kind of paper in between or anything. And when I'm ready to enjoy one, I just open up the bag or that container. I pull one out and I just set it out and let it thaw out at room temperature. If I'm in a hurry, I put it in the microwave for 10 seconds, check on it, and just kind of do that in 10 second intervals until it's all the way heated through because you don't want to overheat those. Or you can just heat it back up in the oven or a toaster oven. So that's it. This is, like I said, it's one of the easiest recipes to use your sourdough uh, discard with. I think I forgot to mention that you can use regular sourdough, uh, fed sourdough, for this recipe, but you don't have to. We've made this using our discard and it's just another way that you can use sourdough discard and not waste any of it. So we really hope that you enjoy this recipe as much as we love it. And until next time, bye.